so this is what it's like buying a house. So today I want to dive into all of the details that I can think of about buying a house. I mean, we'll get into how much my mortgage is, how much the house costs, and all the things that I feel like they don't tell you about buying a house. This video is sponsored by Ashley Home Store, so thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. And before I get into all of the things, I want to give you guys a house update. So as you guys know, I fully decorated like my living room area and all of that stuff. The last thing to do in this house was the third bedroom. So Ashley Home Store sent me furniture from their new collection. It is called the urbanology line and it's defined as the study of eclectic style. It's a mixture of boho, urban, and my favorite mid-century modern style furniture. I picked out the Broshton bedroom set and I really love it because the wood is so beautiful. It feels really homey and rustic and good quality you guys like really nice quality. They have a ton of different really stylish pieces at genuinely really affordable prices. I'm so impressed with the quality of this furniture and at a really good price point. I definitely would recommend checking out Ashley Home Store. I'll have the link below. You can shop the Urbanology line. They're also running a sweepstakes. I'll have a link below to that as well. You can enter to win a $4,000 room makeover from Ashley Home Store. Definitely enter that too. You never know, you could be the winner. They also sent me the most beautiful teak outdoor dining set. I love it so much. Oh, it's amazing. So thank you again to Ashley Home Store for gifting me all these products and for sponsoring today's video. Now on to all of the things that I learned about buying a house. So the first thing that really, really shocked me about buying a house is how quickly you can get an answer. I don't know why, but I kind of just assume maybe you'd hear back in like a week or whenever the seller felt like, you know, I don't really know what I expected. I knew that there are situations where a seller will put the house on the market and then they'll have a certain day that they're gonna review offers. So maybe they'll put the house on the market on a Thursday and then they'll review offers that next Tuesday. You could put your offer in on a Sunday and then you know you're waiting till Tuesday. Like that's a very common thing that can happen. So that was kind of what I was expecting when putting an offer in in my house. I was really surprised to hear back the exact same day. Honestly, it's shocking. I put in an offer probably around 3 p.m. that day and heard back around 10 p.m. In my case, the home sellers decided that they wanted to decline or accept an offer by the end of the day, the day that an offer came in. So that did definitely create the craziest like bidding war. Okay, not really. It wasn't like a crazy bidding war, but it was surprising my first ever time buying a house. I was the first one to put in an offer and then three other people put in offers within the span of the next couple hours. It was crazy. So there were four total offers and they picked mine. And I can't believe as the first time buyer, I'm the one that won. I I was so shocked. So that brings me to the second thing that I learned that won me over this house. So when I put in my offer, I put in a full offer for the house. I knew I really wanted it. It had been on the market for this was its fourth day. Other people were interested. You know, there's some buzz about it. I don't want to get like super, super specific for privacy reasons, but my house was in the $700,000 range. I know I could get like a palace in Texas, but this is Seattle and it's just not like that. I put in the exact number full offer and as it turned out, I know one person offered all cash, but I don't think it was a full offer. There was another person that offered a full offer just like mine and they offered 20% down. My offer was a full offer with 10% of a down payment. I don't know what was up with the last offer, but basically it was like between my offer, not quite as strong with 10% down versus this other person doing a full offer with 20% down. So my real estate agent called me back up it was like, there's other offers that have been submitted. And what I recommend that we do, if you really want this house, so you can do this thing where you put in a full offer and then you can also say that you'll pay a certain number more than any other offer up to a limit. You know, you're not gonna do it up to like a million dollars, right? So for example, let's say the house was $700,000. Then I basically said, okay, my full offer is $700,000 plus $7,000 more than any other offer offer up to $720,000. So basically I was saying, if the other person's offering 700K, I'll offer 707. If they're offering 705, I'll offer 712. And as it turned out, that worked perfectly. The other offer was 20% down. It is a little bit stronger than my 10% down, but they did just a full offer. And I said that I would do $7,000 more than them. So I ended up closing on the house with 10% down and $7,000 more than 
the list price. And when I got the house inspected, it was appraised for $5,000 more than I bought it for. So it was definitely a good buy in all regards, even though I paid a little bit more for it. And adding that money really isn't a big deal because at the end of the day, an extra $7,000 to your 30 year mortgage, that's like 10 bucks a day. So really doing that was like a strategic move for me to be able to have a stronger offer, even though I didn't have as much cash for a down payment. That was a really cool thing. I think that's great to know. That was something I did not know at all that you could do going into buying a house. So if you find something you really love and it's a little bit competitive, I definitely recommend going that route. The next thing that I didn't know was exactly what escrow is. I thought escrow was just a word that meant that time in between buying a house and getting the house, that time when you're closing. I thought that was just like the word for it, but that is not what escrow is. So escrow is actually there are escrow companies and the escrow company is the third party company that is dealing with all the documents, all the money, all that stuff. Because you know, you can't just be sending those documents over to the home seller. Like things would get so messy. So there's that third party, the escrow company. That's where you send the down payment money. That's where my monthly mortgage payment goes to them because a mortgage payment is packaged up of like, you know, your monthly property taxes, your principal, your interest, your insurance. So you give them all that money and they disperse it out where it needs to go. So I was so wrong in not knowing what escrow is. And when you go in to sign for everything, you go into the escrow office. I actually have it with me right here. So this is what it's like buying a house. This is the stack of papers that I signed on the day I went to the escrow office. That was another thing. I was so curious about the signing day because you always hear people exaggerate like, oh, you're gonna sign so much, your wrist is gonna be sore. And so I really didn't know what to expect at all. But basically what it is, is you show up to the escrow office and honestly, it takes about 45 minutes. Um, there is a notary person there. So you have to put your middle initial, which is something I didn't know. And I believe it was somewhere between 45 to 60 signatures so it took about 45 minutes so it was about a minute a page the guy would basically like run through things you'd sign sometimes you just initial my wrist was not sore by the end of it but it was a nice fun exciting thing to get to do because it was like I feel like I've heard about this all my life what is it actually like the next thing that I learned was all of the people that go into your home buying process so obviously it's you and your realtor duh that is about the the only extent that I knew. So when I first met my realtor, he quickly educated me on how important the lender is going to be to your home buying process. The lender is so important because they are the one you're giving all the documents to. They're the one that is like packaging up and making your financing happen because, you know, I don't know about you, but I didn't just have $700,000 laying around and they're the one talking to the bank. And then that led me to basically the most important person. I mean, everyone is equally important, but like the person that's basically gonna say yes or no to you is the underwriter because the underwriter is the person at the bank, a real human looking at all your documents and deciding yes or no, if they're gonna give you this loan. So the underwriter is extremely important. You do a lot and like the whole process of buying a house to getting the keys takes about a month. In that time, you're doing a lot of waiting, but the first thing that you do within the first, I think 48 hours, it is of getting your offer accepted, you have to send in earnest money. And that is really surprising, but I didn't know that earnest money was a thing at all. Earnest money is money that you send to the seller that basically says you're serious about buying this piece of property because within the whole transaction of buying a house, you really, you can back out at any time and you can get your earnest money back. You can pretty much get everything back with like no repercussions. So sending your earnest money is just telling the seller like, hey, I'm serious about this transaction, like we're gonna go through with it. So for my case, I sent the seller within 48 hours, $18,000 as earnest money. The earnest money goes towards your down payment and your closing costs and everything like that. It's not just like another random fee you're giving people. And then after that, I had an inspector and a sewer inspector come and the inspector just goes over your home, looks for anything crazy that could be wrong. They teach you a lot about your house. It's super interesting. I actually found out I had heated floors in my bathroom. I also found out like, 
I have this vacuum system throughout my house and I have a tankless water heater. So the water in my house heats up like super quick because there's no tank where the water has to run through. It's just always hot water going through the pipes. Since there's always hot water going through the pipes, it keeps my house a lot warmer. And because I'm an interior unit, like I'm not an end unit, the other side units also help warm my house. And basically it's the dead of winter. It's 30 degrees out and I haven't turned my heat on. It's a comfortable 69 degrees in my house. Isn't that crazy? And the inspector cost $750 and then the sewer inspector was like $250. And these were the only costs that I ran into that like come out of pocket randomly that aren't included in the closing costs. So the closing costs and down payment, like that's a huge chunk of money. And you know, that's a whole thing you deal with and set aside. But other than that, the only other out of pocket expense was the inspector and was the sewer. So, and the sewer is actually optional. So then after that, your house has to appraise for as much as you wanna buy it for. So an appraiser comes, looks at everything and makes sure it's at that market value. If you bought the house for 700,000 and the appraiser says it's worth 600,000, a bank is not gonna give you a loan for $700,000. So that's a big hurdle you have to get through. So that was everything that happened within the first seven days of my offer getting approved. So it was kind of a lot happening. And then after that, it was like two or three weeks of just kind of sending my lender more document. There was a lot of back and forth where they would need another document. Honestly, the biggest thing that I wanna tell you guys is people say a lot of really general statements and they kind of exaggerate them because it's just an easy thing to say. So people say it's so stressful to buy a house and that's a really general exaggerated statement it's really not that hard to buy a house. And the last thing that I learned before buying the house actually, but I just want to hit home on that, another kind of exaggerated statement that people say is that when you're renting, you're throwing all your money away, but when you're buying a house, you're building equity and you're not throwing your money away. Now that's true, but you're still throwing your money away. I already knew this before buying a house, but the reality is you're not building that much equity. And there are a lot of instances where buying a house might not be worth it to you because that monthly mortgage, it doesn't all go to your equity. I'm gonna break it down for you guys and tell you exactly how much I pay for my mortgage and how much goes to equity. For my first ever mortgage payment of $4,400, $600 of that went to property taxes. So that is money that I don't get back ever that goes to the government. $200 of that was for mortgage insurance because I only put 10% down, I have mortgage insurance. And then I think 50 to $100 a month goes to home insurance. And then $2,600 goes to interest, which is what I'm paying the bank. That's like a lot of money that gets thrown away at the end of the day. That's a lot. And then my principal that goes towards paying off my loan is $900. So that is the money that is building me equity out of my $4,400. And what happens is every month that you pay it down, you pay a little bit less in interest and a little bit more goes towards your principal. Now my first month, I'm paying $2,600 in interest and $900 in principal. When I get to my 360th month of home ownership, I will pay $13.15 in interest and $3,506 in principal. So basically it's like you're paying so much to the bank first and then it's slowly over time, just like daylight saving starts to add more daylight to your day, you start to get to pay more money into your equity. So even though I bought a house and it's really cool and everything, I'm still throwing away like $3,000 a month that I don't get that's either going to the government or the bank. And ultimately that's why I decided to get a townhouse rather than a condo. Because now I have two roommates that have moved into my house and they're paying for about $2,000 worth of the mortgage. So out of my pocket, I'm actually paying about $2,400 a month and $1,500 of that is money I'm kind of throwing away that I'll never get to see again. So if you're watching this and you're not close to buying a house at all, you shouldn't feel bad about renting. You can just be saving your money and renting and you can still be building wealth and you can eventually like buy a home or not. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got money in the bank and a roof over your head, even if you don't own that roof, like you're good and life's good and we're all gonna be all right. So thanks for watching this video. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel and thank you again to Ashley Home Store for sponsoring today's video. Definitely check them out in the link below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.